Procreate Pocket 2 is out on the iPhone. Let's take a look and see how it compares to its big brother on the iPad. One of my favorite drawing apps anywhere is Procreate over on the iPad. A big part of that is how well it works with the Apple Pencil. On the phone, you can't use an Apple Pencil, at least not yet. So you're gonna be finger painting or using a third party stylus. Now to celebrate having a smaller version of Procreate on the iPhone, we are gonna make me smaller using the power of my zoom lens. Oh shit. I was surprised at how faithful of a recreation this app is from the iPad version. There's some pretty clever changes here to fit the interface onto smaller screens. The size and opacity sliders on the side have been replaced by these circles. They work the same way, but they're less obtrusive. The undo and redo buttons, they're gone. They're now only accessible with touch gestures. This is something that the app explains with a little tutorial up front when you first boot it up. So holding the phone in portrait mode, it all feels a little bit cramped, but if you turn it over to landscape, it feels just like a miniature version of the iPad app. All the icons fit nicely onto the screen and I felt right at home. This really is a uh, feature for feature recreation of the iPad app. All of my favorites made it in here. Press to hold to use the eyedropper, drag your color swatch over to fill in a shape. You can import any brush from your collection or anything that you found online. You can even still swipe down with three fingers to bring up your copy and paste menu. They even found a couple spots to make improvements in the interface. For example, the selection tools now have text labels. That makes it a little bit clearer so you have a better idea what you're doing now. The larger color picker in general is the same. You can stick with the circle of rainbowy goodness or you can switch to the square of tones. Of course, you could always manually enter in values too. And all your swatch options are here. But overall, the most impressive part might be the brushes. I mentioned earlier that you can import brushes, but every brush that comes with the iPad version is right here in the app. You can of course create your own, fiddle with the settings of any that already exist, all of that stuff is faithful and recreated. Now say you want some pressure sensitivity, even though it doesn't work with the Apple Pencil, this does work with some Bluetooth styluses. Wacom, Pogo, Adonit. I personally never cared for any of these Bluetooth styluses. I tried, and while they tend to be a little bit more accurate than the dumb styluses, they promise more than they can deliver when it comes to things like pressure sensitivity and palm rejection. In recent updates, Procreate spent a lot of time updating and packing functionality into their layers. All of those features made the trip over to this app too. You can group them into folders, you can use reference layers, you can even make masks. You will have to scroll to see all your options, at least if you're in landscape mode. So if your favorite layer feature isn't in there, just tap the little arrow until you can see it. And what about canvas sizes? There are predefined canvas sizes, but you can go off the ranch and define your own. The number of layers you can use here is more limited than the iPad version, but for my default canvas size, I was still getting 20 layers. That's, that's a good number of layers and probably more than I ever really use. So overall, what's my opinion? As impressed as I was with what they've done here, here, I didn't really have fun with it. That's not the fault of the developer. I just had a hard time drawing on the really small screen with bad styluses. Some people can finger paint like a boss. That's not me. I'm not good enough to pull that off. So not having the Apple Pencil really hampered my experience. I can see myself using this if I'm out and about. I want to sketch down an idea or just capture something quickly. I don't see myself ever using this for like tight, finished artwork. Maybe if I already have something created, I want to change some colors or something like that and then like send it off to a client. Maybe, maybe that would be a good use for it. Now, something that would be cool to see in the future would be tighter integration with iCloud. Currently, I can export my artwork to iCloud or Google Drive or, or anything like that, really. And of course, I can import from all those places, too. But it'd be really sweet if I had just in my gallery everything listed that I had created on my iPad available right there on my phone. Maybe not downloaded, but at least like a little preview available where I could tap on it, download it from the cloud and, and have it right there. So I'm not uploading and then downloading. Downloading. I mean, at least so I'm not doing it manually. I think, I think the camera is ready to go. Currently, the app is in the App Store. It only costs $5. I know people don't like paying for apps, but everything you're getting here is just really impressive. And when you compare it to, say, the price of a desktop app, there's a ton here. There's a lot to like. And overall, I'm just really impressed at how faithful it is to the iPad version. So if you have any comments or questions or anything I may have missed, let me know in the comment section down below. I guess that's all I've got for today. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll talk to you later.